So the talk is, should it be patient specific or surgeon specific, the knee implant selection? And the simple answer is that it has to be surgeon specific. So uh, if we are really short of time, this is my talk. So most current implant designs are good. Polyware, which was a huge problem earlier, is not that much of a problem in the first 15 years in the current knees. So early failures that we see are mostly surgeon dependent. So surgical decisions, and we heard brilliant talks about alignment, balancing and the cuts. And I would think that those form the crux of what one would do as an arthroplasty surgeon. And the D, the design, the decisions that one needs to make is whether to do a partial or a total knee. If it is partial, should we do fixed bearing or mobile? If it is total, should we retain the posterior cruciate or do posterior stabilize? What to do with the patella? And then we also have the choice of materials, companies, design philosophy, standard implants or newer implants and technology. So just a brief uh, few words about partial knee. As we know, correctable varus that disappears on flexion, anterior medial osteoarthritis, very well described by Goodfellow, intact anterior cruciate ligaments, minimal patellofemoral symptoms, relatively modest deformity with a good range of movement, and typical X-ray features as shown on these radiographs. And if we can do a good partial knee, the patients will be very, very happy. Now, whether you do it mobile or, 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 or uh, fixed is your choice. But partial knees have a checkered history, but there is a recent increased interest. A very, very good trial was published in The Lancet called the TopCat trial in which patients who were suitable for partial knees were either offered partial knee or total knee and they did a study of almost a thousand patients and a five-year outcome was that both partial and total can offer similar outcomes but partial should be considered the first choice because of lower cost and better outcomes. When I looked at our own study which we published 22, year, 22 years ago in JBJS our conclusion was that a suitable uni can perform better than a total in suitable patients. So the history is kind of repeating itself. Fixed or mobile partial knee data is very, very similar. Cement is the standard and robotics, as we heard, can improve the results. Other partial knees, lateral unis, patellofemoral joint replacements, medial uni with patellofemoral joint, there are no big numbers and hence these are best avoided unless we are doing them in research setups. But we need to be aware because most registries show a higher revision rate for unis, which is triple in the first year and double after that till the next 10 years. Now, when we come to total knee, again, the discussion is whether cruciate retaining or posterior stabilized and medial pivot has gained some grounds in some countries. So retention or substitution of PCL is a matter of philosophy, training, area and country preferences. Obviously, if we reject it, then CAM and POST is the standard. Different implant companies have differing shapes of the post, the position, the thickness and the anatomical place. But over time, we have all seen post wears. If you are doing a cruciate retaining knee, there is no CAM or POST. But the shape of the poly can differ from a, a standard to an anterior stabilized as to what you need to use. This is a slide which I borrowed from the Indian Joint Registry from the ISH, which shows the number of joints that are being done. And if you look at these almost 30,000 joints per year, 76% of the Indian market is PS. But that is not really the case worldwide. In the United Kingdom, 75% of the market is cruciate retaining. In Australian registry, again, 75% of the market is cruciate retaining. Both CR and PS can give excellent results. But is there a difference in the results? So registry show a marginally lower revision rate with cruciate retaining 
and if you look at the australian registry ps knees without the patella have the highest revision rates at 10 and 15 years and cr knees done with patella have the least revision rates and the medial pivot designs have given some good results in that registry 70% of the indian market is ps because the general belief is that if there is a gross deformity especially flexion deformity do a ps knee my belief is greater the deformity greater is the need for conserving the pcl just a thought that in a fixed varus release medial side works so in flexion deformity release posterior side will it work my present practice is i try to preserve the pcl more than 95% of the times it is not difficult to balance and one can get good flexion it can be as easy or as difficult as mcl balancing it can help in fine tuning the flexion gap and i aim to preserve the pcl whenever possible the lift off test as is being seen on the second slide here you can release partially the pcl the anterior fibers of the pcl and you can get a uh, very very balanced flexion gap so this is an example of a case where the knee has a flexion deformity limited range of movement and is stiff you can see the radiographs and you can see with manually used instrumentation the spacer gap the spacer gap from extension to full flexion and the stability of the knee in differing degrees of flexion absolutely no posterior sag with a cruciate retaining knee so there is no need to go for a posterior stabilized as soon as you see a flexion deformity so cruciate retaining in fixed flexion deformity requires posterior capsular release plus removal of posterior and anterior osteophytes pcl is often contracted and needs partial release you may release from the femur from the tibia or do pike thrusting and cruciate retaining can work well with a release pcl and you have curved and extra curved inserts as well and you can get this well balanced cruciate retaining knee if you are just a little bit careful as to how to do the surgery if we look at indian market penetration uh these are the major companies which are supplying knees and you can see the market penetration these are the results for 2019 2020 now what instrumentation is available to implant that knee is also very very critical because it needs to be of adequate size sometimes the instruments are too too large it has to be user friendly it has to be soft tissue friendly and i feel that especially for cutting the tibia medially based jigs which are easier on the patella tendon are very very important and they have to be accurate so we need to look at the implant with instrumentation combined we need to be very very uh, wary of smaller patients and most of our patients or a lot of our patients are are small and i would like to introduce a new term called bone handling bone handling i believe is what we need to do to the bone for it to accept the implant what jigs we put how we uh, how we uh, fix the jigs to the bone what cuts we need to take and finally what bone we get so in very very soft bone our bone handling needs to be minimal now if we look at the patella registry show the least revision rate when the patella is resurfaced but it needs to be of adequate thickness and bone quality and i would personally resurface 90% of the patella in my practice in specific situations you may need to use constrained knees or a primary hinge if there is muscle imbalance or global instability so this is a case of a neuropathic joint which i did almost 15 years ago so had a dislocated patella as well i put a constrained knee and this lady has done well if there is mcl deficiency or neuromuscular problems sometimes in polio quads weakness yeah. 
you may need to put a hinge knee. Newer implants have been available, but these are not necessarily better. High flex implants have not shown higher flexion. Gender specific implants have not shown superior function. The newer biomaterials, highly cross-linked poly, vitamin E poly, ceramics, they Sir, seem we'll to, to have wrap fared up, well we'll need to wrap in up the up, registries. Thank you. New technology, we heard a lot about these, can improve the accuracy. They can be open platform such as navigation and patient specific instrumentation or closed platform as to robotics. But these are available only to a few surgeons and whether they really add value or not is still under consideration. But once you know the basics, what do you do? So I think each surgeon goes to these four stages. First stage is do what your boss would do. So do not reinvent the wheel, only do what you have seen again and again. If it ain't broken, do not fix it. Consistent good results with one implant, do not change. With practice comes experience and possible mastery. Be sure Anilin, that patients are happy. We need to wrap up. Happiness yeah. will lead to greater numbers. Assess, gather knowledge and apply. Assess your success and failures, learn from meetings, masters and mistakes, modify techniques to minimize mistakes and ensure satisfaction in greater number of patients. And I would say that intelligence is the ability to learn from your mistakes, but wisdom is the ability to learn from others' mistakes. This is a very great saying from Rig Ved that let noble thoughts come to us from all directions. The Zen principle says that poorer is the pupil who does not excel as master. So we need to do better than our teachers. But if we do not innovate, change is constant, then we are likely to be left behind. But innovation for the sake of innovation may not work. It must add value. So understand what works in your hands and then do that.